Hello everybody, Matt Cloud with Ruckus Networks, back with you for another ICX troubleshooting series. Today we're going to cover everybody's favorite, PIM Sparse Multicast. Alright, well, let's get started. Let's take a look at our topology. So for this we're going to be using PIM Sparse. We are running OSPF within this entire environment. Now everything configured in here, each of these links is a point-to-point -point link pointed to the next device, including this link right here. Our multicast source is up here, who's going to be serving up group 224.100.1.250. Down here is our receiver. And you can see he has his IP address on him as 10.2.11.200. Now, what we're going to do is this stream right here out of our multicast source is currently running. So we're going to go ahead and try to receive this from 10.2.11.200 and see what happens. So as you can see, I have one video that's streaming now using VLC Media Player. You aren't able to see the video in this because it's running through a VM and it just doesn't paint the screen correctly. Now, what I'm going to do, even though you can't see me click on this on your screen, I'm going to flip over to another VM session that I have open, and this is going to our receiver, which we looked at earlier. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to open VLC, I'm going to go in and try to open this network stream. Now, I know that my IP address, or group address in this case, is 224.100.1.250, and it is on port 5004. If we quick click play, okay, we're not receiving it, so we've got to take a look. The challenge here with troubleshooting multicast is you have to troubleshoot everything backwards. And what I mean by that is typically you would troubleshoot everything from the source and move towards the destination. Well, in this example, our source is where we're going to end up last in our troubleshooting. We're going to start at our receiver because as we know in multicast, everything is sent to the group. So in a sense, we're troubleshooting this backwards. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to begin troubleshooting from here and from here. So I want to make sure that I can ping 10.2.51.202 from this IDF device here. There's a VE built on it. It is in OSPF. And I want to make sure that I can actually ping that guy. So let's take a look at that real quick and see if we can just ping it. So let's try 10.2.51.202. Okay, this is showing me that I can get to it, at least at an IPv4 perspective. Now, another thing that we can do is we can check and make sure that we have correct routing and a reverse path back by using the RPF algorithm built into multicast. So I'm going to do a show IP PIM RPF, and if you check this, it'll just ask you for the source address for the RPF check. Our multicast source is 10.2.51.202, and it shows that we do have an upstream neighbor, meaning that we can route to it, which is good. So what we need to do now is start to look at our uh, multicast mcache entries. So I'm going to look at this in two ways. IGMP snooping is turned on here, but we're also a PIM router, so the IDF router itself right here that this arrow is pointing to is a PIM router. So we're going to go ahead and check our PIM cache and see what that looks like. So show IP PIM M cache. Okay. Now we have something interesting in here. We don't have a source in this entry, but we do have a group address in here that is being learned from the rendezvous point, which is our core router. And if we looked at this earlier, You'll note that the core router is right here. This is the rendezvous point for this multicast domain. Okay, so we can see which interface it's coming in and which interface it's going out. So we're going to go ahead and build our incoming outgoing interface list, and I'm going to use this diagram on the right to draw that. So let's take a look at that. I'm going to start up here at the core because I want to see how this flow is actually traveling. So let's do a show IP PIM mcache and see what this is looking like. Okay, we have a source entry here, which is good. We also see it coming in on Ethernet 1148. So let's just take a look at this real quick and do some drawing. So this is our incoming interface. Oops. 
that's not correct. This is our incoming interface. It's coming in this way. All right, so which way is it going out? It's going out 112. So this then becomes our outgoing interface as well. So that means in order to follow the path of this flow or this multicast stream, we now need to look in distro one. And we're going to check him next, which is this tab. And let's see what his mcache entry looks like. So show IP PIM mcache. OK, it sees the group from the rendezvous point coming in on 113. And it sees it going out on 114, which is towards the IDF switch. So now if we go back and compare what our IDF switch showed us, we can see that it's coming in on 111, which is correct. And it's going out on 1124. So the interesting thing about this is that the multicast stream is being built. All of the routers, as we know in multicast, do all the lifting for you. So they're actually building the short path tree to make sure that the multicast flow can get from one hop to the next. And it's using our IGP routing table to do that. Now, this has been proven because we can ping from the receiver to the source. And we can also see how that flow is built and which way it's going. All right, so let's take a look at a couple other things and see if we can't isolate what's going on here. All right, first thing, let's look on the IDF router. I'm going to do some different show IP PIM commands. And the first thing that I'm really looking for is we're just looking for healthy PIM traffic. So if we do a show IP PIM sparse, this is going to show us our sparse mode settings. And a lot of this is not really going to lead us to this problem, but it can lead you to other problems, especially in interop environments. Now, a couple things to note right off the bat is it's going to show us what our system default value is for maximum mcache entries. and We're not anywhere close to that right now. Hello inter intervals, join prune, uh, harder drop is enabled, and also this is important that we don't have SSM enabled, which is source specific multicast. We're not using that right now. That's a switch that you have to turn on inside of the device. Uh, it does show our current count of two, so we have two entries. It shows our neighbor, inactivity, timeout, uh, prune weight interval, things like that. So it'll give you a baseline to look at and compare to interrupt devices just to see where you're at. Another thing I like to do is just check the um, flow count. And right now we don't see any. Well, we know that because our flow isn't actually up and being received by the receiver. So let's take a look at our show IP PIM traffic. All right, here's where we're seeing our actual messages. Now, some of the things that I notice in here right away is that we've got some hello messages. Uh, that's a good thing, and those hellos are coming in on the interface where this flow should be coming in. We have join prunes. And we also have some bootstrap messages, and that bootstrap mechanism is running through there doing that, which is great. Uh, on these ports here, now this is all of our transmit traffic, so taking a quick step back, the first part of this field up here is actually what we're seeing is, let me get my little drawer pin set up, this right here is all of our receive traffic. Down here is what we're transmitting. So the big key piece to look at here is to ensure that we're actually sending and receiving on the correct interface. And as you can see here, we are. Everything's happening on 111 and 111. So this looks pretty healthy. Uh, let's take a look now at the next hop on our flow, which is going to be in distribution 1. And we're just going to do the same thing. We're going to do a show IP PIM sparse. And I mean, we're running a default sparse mode config on all Ruckus hardware, so all of these timers are going to match. So let's take a look at our flow count. Yeah, we have nothing there either. Show IP PIM traffic and make sure that we're seeing all of our traffic being sent and received on the correct interfaces, which it looks like we are. So we want to take a look at this a little bit and make sure that we don't get too lost in the details. So we can see here that 3113 and 114 are both transmitting and receiving as well as lag 1. Now this right here is lag 1. So we have some PIM control traffic going back and forth on all of these interfaces. But 
all of these interfaces are sending traffic, including this interface here, which is going down to IDF1. So this looks good as well. All right. So now let's jump into the PIM first hop router, the PIM sparse mode router, the core router. Let's see what we see in there doing the same thing. So show IP PIM sparse. And again, we look fine there. Nothing looks out of whack. So our flow count. Well, we do have one there, which is good because it's being received. But that also leads me to believe that it's a little bit odd that it's not being received anywhere else. We have a flow count here. We don't have a flow count here. We know that we probably don't have a flow count here. We can verify that just to make sure. And we don't have a flow count here. So let's take a look. Just real quick in distro two, I want to do a show. Show IP PIM flow count. And we don't have any flows there either. So our flow is missing for some reason. Interesting. Let's do a show IP PIM traffic. Okay, receiving and transmitting where we should be all of the correct interfaces, which we can compare to this this uh, diagram or topology over here. We see 112, we see lag one. Again, that's gonna be because it has PIM neighbors here in distro two, so that's correct. Uh, we're not receiving anything on VLAN 51. That's just the VLAN that he is attached to. We wouldn't be any, receiving anything there, but we are transmitting. Okay, so we have no flows. All right, let's take a look at this. There's one last show command that we can use, and that's a show IP PIM error. This is an extremely useful command because as you can see, immediately we get an, a report here, TTL expiring, outgoing interface empty, wrong interface. Okay. Of all of these, this one right here concerns me the absolute most is the TTL expire. Now, looking at this environment, we know that this is a routed environment. It's not switched. So somewhere the TTL is decrementing beyond what it's set to within the application. Now, we looked at our mCache and we noticed that this flow was built and that's because that information gets passed down to each device. Now. The PIM sparse router is also our PIM first hop router. So this guy here, once the stream gets set up from him, he gets installed here. This rendezvous point informs the other PIM routers that he has a group that's alive. And that's why we were able to see that in that PIM cache entry. Now we see it going the other way because this host right here, your receiver, has actually been asking for it but he's unable to receive it because the TTL is expiring somewhere in transit. So what we need to do is we're gonna open up our terminal back open to our multicast source. We're gonna fire up a packet capture. We're gonna take a look and see what it's sending and then see if we can't resolve that. Well, as you can see, we're back in Windows. We've got Wireshark open. And I'm gonna go ahead and capture on our local area connection. And we've probably got plenty of packets right there. All of them are going to look the same. Now our source interface is correct. We see it coming from the LAN connection that goes to our lab. And we see the destination is our group address. So this is exactly what we're looking for. So let's tear this packet apart. And I'm going to go ahead and blow this window up a little bit here. And we're going to look right where the TTL lives. We're going to scroll down and see right away that this thing's sending a TTL of one. Now, this is something that you may or may not know already, but VLC by default sends a TTL of one. You can change this in the global settings if you want, or you can change it when you set the stream up. Uh, but we're gonna go ahead and turn around and rebuild this stream and see if we can get it sent with the correct TTL. Now, one of two ways that you can do this is I'm gonna close this because we don't need to save this capture. I'm gonna go into tools and I'm going to go to preferences and within here I'm going to go to all and you can scroll down here to the stream output and if you go to access output it's going to show you your hop limit TTL of minus one 
And we're going to set this to 10. I'm going to go ahead and save that. And now what I'm going to do, I'm going to go ahead and restart this stream. So I'm going to close VLC, reopen it. We're going to go to media stream. I'm going to go ahead and add one of our video files. I'm going to use RTP MPEG transport. Now I don't display it locally just because through a VM it doesn't really display well and we're more worried about if we can receive it on the other end anyways. So we'll add that. We'll put our group address in here 224.100.1.250. I like to give it a video name. Let's call it video one. I'm going to say next, next stream all elementary streams and we're going to hit stream all right now one thing i want to do before we move on is just go ahead and start uh, wireshark backup take a look at the packets verify that our ttl took and it did it took it in the global settings so we'll go ahead and close this we can quit without saving we can leave this stream up now i want to jump back into our other host and see if we can pull the stream now our receiver so I'm going to go ahead and jump into here, and I can go to Media, Open Recent Media, and we're going to go ahead and try to open this guy. Just kidding. There it is. We got it fixed. TTL's resolved. The flow is working. We're actually pulling our video stream from our multicast source. Well, that wraps us up. Another fun one. Again, remember to hit subscribe, click the notification button so you get notified of new videos, leave a comment, let us know what you'd like to see, and we'll see you next time.